It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, my friends, we've heard about the expansion here at the Lehigh Valley uh, Hospital in Hazleton, and I thought maybe today would give you a preview of uh, what's happening here. And all I can tell you is that when I keep telling you how health care in this area is just keep on raising the bar, state of the art, and you're going to be impressed today. Uh, today, we'll give you a sort of a synopsis of what's going on. And joining me today is Dr. Um, Anthony Valent. So first of all, thanks for coming on. Sure, Sam. And Thank giving you. us a, a, a tour of what's happening. My pleasure. Uh, let's talk about going back when the hospital decided. Why did you decide that you needed a major expansion? Well, well, Sam, as the community has grown and the needs have changed, we found that our existing emergency room just was no longer adequate. Even though we just had remodeled it back in 2005 and we had expanded it back then, uh, it still kind of had run its course and we were in need of a, a real overhaul of the emergency room. All right, so with that being said, uh, there are phases here, okay? So we're here today and we're gonna show uh, the viewers part of what's going on right. because, uh, so let's talk about, uh, this would be phase one. Right. Okay. What's all involved with phase one? Okay, well, I'm glad you said that actually because, and it's important for everybody to, to understand that too because so that we could stay in business, so to speak, and continue to see patients, we had to break up the actual construction. So this is phase one. What you're in right now is phase one, uh, which is the new section. This is all new construction. Uh, the patients are still being seen behind us over that way, so it's business as usual back there. So phase one will be done, we hope, uh, next week. Uh, we're planning on opening this section uh, 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 August 14th. Mm -hmm. And what will happen at that time, we'll move the existing uh, services from in there out here. We'll be seeing patients out here, and then we'll be constructing the new, the old part will be getting renovated. So we won't necessarily have a, the full picture until really the end of the year, mm -hmm. you see. So phase one will be over next week. Phase two starts with the remodeling of the existing ED. And then probably around uh, the beginning of 2020, the whole thing will then be done. When you're doing some kind of expansion like this, all right, and uh, you look at the community, you said, the reason community is growing, okay, and, and I think what's happening now, uh, Tony, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, we have a lot of people, not only from Hazleton, but we are, you're servicing people from uh, Tamaqua, Pottsville, Lehigh, I mean, they're, they're coming in from different areas, is that correct? All over, yeah, we do, we do see more people coming in from the, the uh, outlying and surrounding areas as well, and the, the ED volume has gone up substantially over, over the years. You know, the amount of people that we see per year has had a steady, uh, steady increase over okay. the years. Yeah. So what, what should the community then expect, okay? Um, uh, tell me about this new phase, what's in it, what, what are the benefits to the community? Okay, well, I, I think our best bit is if we, if we take it phase by phase first. So what they can expect. Next week, they could expect this portion to be completed and they would be seen in here okay which is still technically about half of the emergency department what we're standing in is roughly about 10,000 square feet there's another 10,000 square feet back there yet to be remodeled mm -hmm. so next week we will still be operating in about half of what will eventually be the whole ED mm -hmm. what they can expect towards the end of the year when everything is then completed they can expect the ED to be just about twice the size uh, that it is now. We will be going from just about 10,000 square feet to almost uh, 19,000, 20,000 square feet in that area and we will be ramping up to uh, 30 beds with a self-contained five bed behavioral health unit. So not quite doubling the beds but pretty darn close. All right, so now how does that relate to health care? Okay. okay. So we got beautiful rooms. Right, okay. right. How does that relate to health care? How does that okay. affect me? Well, obviously, what we're, what we're anticipating and what we're striving to do is to be able to still see the people that we're seeing, be able to accommodate an increase in patients coming in here and improve the throughput. We're, our goal is to decrease the wait times, to get people in and out of here more efficiently, uh, to have them seen by providers, 
sooner just to make their stay in the emergency department much more pleasant. It's bad enough coming to the emergency room yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, that you have to be here in the first place. Yeah, yeah. And we certainly want to make it, if you have to be here, we want to make it where it's as pleasant as we can for you and your family. Mm -hmm. And by enlarging and, and expanding the space, we hope to do that uh, with added staff and added capabilities. Tony, throughout the years, uh, I've been doing these interviews, and I remember when we were at Mountaintop, we saw uh, video conferences, and we saw technology. And uh, I think when you have the latest in technology, that relates to me, I think, better healthcare, because you know to get to the problem as soon as you can. Correct, right. I'm not a doctor. No, no, you're absolutely, yeah. you're absolutely so, right. So yeah. the point is, now, I, I noticed that there's high tech equipment in all these rooms. Everywhere, yes. The, the patient's chart will be coming right to the bedside, which yeah. as you can see in here, we have a new dedicated CT scanner mm -hmm. that will be just for, uh, just basically just for this area. Mm -hmm. High tech scanner, a very quick scanner, mm -hmm. wonderful imaging, great software on it. Uh, we still have the capabilities of doing uh, telemedicine, teleconsults. Uh, we bring it right here, right to the patient, right to the bedside. So, uh, yeah, the short answer to what you uh, just yeah. said, Sam, is, is yes, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so now being involved with Allentown and, you know, the, the mothership sort of degree, I mean, is, but it seems like um, that there is constant communication going back and forth. Correct. Right? All right. What areas here, are you, will we adding any additional things in, uh, in emergency care that you do not have now? Right now, going forward, Sammy, uh, no. The short answer is no. Okay. Uh, we will still be doing everything we presently do. Now, we are looking into numerous entities as time goes by, once we get a little bit more of a lay of the land and we see what resources are available and what services are needed, uh, yes, the, the short answer then will be yes, we will be looking at uh, just what services we need to add. Mm -hmm. All right, so now uh, when we're looking at, uh, I, I noticed that the hospital uh, has many awards okay stroke is one of them okay heart etc we still have the transportation going down to uh, Allentown will, will this new emergency room facilitate a better opportunity for that helicopter going down and the people knowing that's coming to them will it, will it give them additional information or the same I'm, I'm just Wondering. It, it will give them more efficient information and we hope to more efficiently treat people. I guess that's the best answer yeah, I yeah, could give yeah. you right now, Sammy. The, it's, it will be the efficiency where I really think that's, that's what's going to be really taking the notch up. It's going to be the efficiency in which we can function. Okay. In doing this, uh, we talked prior, in just putting rooms up is a great thing and having the latest technology but they also have to be what we call staffed, Correct. okay? Correct. So do you have the staff to be able to warrant all these? Yes, we are aggressively, aggressively recruiting additional staff, obviously, uh, as this project moves forward and when the need comes for when we, when we do have those other beds open, yes, uh, the short answer is yes, we will have the additional staffing necessary to take care of those beds. When someone comes here to the emergency room and if they leave, uh, they get questionnaires uh, as to, you know, how was it and that stuff. And that gives you an opportunity of how, knowing what you're, you're all about here. What were um, some of the concerns, okay, that, um, that the, the hospital is very well aware of? Um, are, are you're addressing those concerns? Absolutely. I mean, there's, there's not many of them, but some right. concerns. And that's, then there's conceptions, perceptions where people think it's, if it's, if it's an inch, they're making it a yard, okay? Um, so with that being said, are, are we addressing some of those concerns? Absolutely. <coughs> a, a big portion of the layout, which I don't know if we have time to really get into, but a big portion of the layout of this facility was made just addressing those concerns. And I'll give you a very quick example of that. Yes. One of the issues that always comes up is the wait time. Yes. And there, there's two sides to a wait time. When you're in an emergency room, it's not, it's not who comes in first that gets seen, it's who's the sickest yeah. that gets seen. So there's a triage process in, a, in, a, in, a, in an emergency room. But that aside, one of the things we did, and one of the way this is laid out, is that for those people that are not as sick as somebody else, where we feel we can move them through more quickly, there'll be a separate section or unit of this oh. bigger unit That'd where those people can come good. right through. And we hope that that will do two things. It will facilitate the people that can get in and out of here quicker that they do mm -hmm. while we're taking care of the sicker patients. 
in a different part of the in a different part of the ED. So it, it frees up staff to take care of the sicker patients while you're getting the people that can get in and out of here quicker, more quickly, and obviously more satisfied. Yeah, that, that, that's that's it's a big always, satisfier. Yeah, it's always big a big because an, an emergency room is a tough place to be because, oh as gosh. I said, yeah. you've got to take care of the sickest people first, and a lot of times those people that are not quite so sick really feel neglected. And they feel like, geez, well, they're not taking care of me. It's not that you don't want to take care of them. It's just that we've got to prioritize and take care of the sickest of the sick first. I've seen your people in action here, okay? I was one of them, okay? Not seriously, but everyone who brings someone into a hospital, especially emergency, no matter what it is, it's your son, your father, you're concerned, and that's priority to them. The people who work here, the doctors and the nurses and everyone who's involved, have such a, an, um, uh, a bedside manner, they realize that even though you think this is the most important thing, and it may not be as serious as that other person. And I have to compliment the emergency system, and I mean that sincerely. I was here and I've seen them, you know, my father-in-law, me, et cetera, and I, I gotta compliment uh, the fact that they handled it, even though someone's screaming at them, right. They're able to ha I mean, I could never do that. No, I know what you're saying. Yeah. A lot of times you're seeing people at their worst. Yes, yeah. And it's not necessarily their fault. That's it's right. They're, they're sick and That's they don't right. feel good. And you're seeing them at their worst and you've got to keep that in perspective. That's right. And, and you can't take it personally. But And you're right, in an emergency room, that, that, that happens very, yeah. very frequently in an emergency room. Well, let me tell you something, very frequently Tony. They do, a, they do a great job with Thank that. you. I'm Folks, glad, I'm, I'm glad talking to, to Dr. Valent here. Uh, a major phase happening here at Lehigh Valley of uh, Hazleton. Uh, Leah Valley Hospital Hazleton. It's a, it's a great opportunity. Uh, it's fabulous for the area. We come back. We're going to talk to uh, John Fletcher, who is the uh, president. Right. He's yep. the he's the main man, and get his input. We'll be back right after this. Thanks for staying with us, folks. I'm Sam Lestan. I'm here at the Lehigh Valley Hospital Hazleton, and I'm joined now with uh, the president, uh, John Fletcher, and we're talking about John this tremendous opportunity to phase, uh, this major phase in uh, the greater Hazel Town area, bringing health care up, okay? The purpose, the amount of money, and some of the additional things that Dr. Valent didn't cover. Okay, so so uh, we've been talking about this for so long now, and it's it's uh, it's incredible to see where we are today. Mm -hmm. uh, we've invested uh, Lehigh Valley Health Network at Lehigh Valley Hospital Hazleton, over $20 million on just this project. And so uh, we've made a major commitment to the Hazleton community um, both a capital investment as well as a, a position of resource investment to the hospital. Tony's talked to you quite a bit about the things that we were offering here as first phase. Mm -hmm. um, I think he also stressed that uh, this is phase one. Mm -hmm. This is not the end of the project. Mm -hmm. This is a step towards the finished product, which we expect to be done in the January time frame. We are going to double the size of the emergency department. I'm sure Tony talked to you about that. Um, <clears throat> and at the end of the phase, uh, we have a concern that we were trying to, as you know, to, uh, Sam, we had some issues with wait times. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we were struggling with our wait times is because we had such high volumes in a limited space. So this beautiful new expansion project is going to help us with that wait time. But I don't want the community to think that this is it. Mm -hmm. And so please, please, please be patient with us uh, as, we, as we go into phase two, which is basically closing the existing ED, renovating that facility, and then January time frame, maybe hopefully a little bit earlier, we're going to open up to the new expanded ED. We will have behavioral health beds in, in that facility as well. Um, and this project, I don't believe Tony had a chance to talk to you about, it's not just the ED, but there's a new main entrance. And so uh, those of you who have been with us and, and, and walked through our facility before, it's going to look completely different when you walk through that main entrance. Uh, you're going to see a, a, a much, uh, and I think we're going to take some pictures of it, so yep. you're going to show, you're going to show your viewers. But uh, there is a, a desk out there to greet people. Uh, you're going to see a new registration area. We've moved our security office uh, closer to the front entrance where there's visibility not only of the main entrance, but there's also visibility of the ED waiting area and the uh, ED entrance. We have also expanded the number of cameras we have, both in the front entrance but throughout the facility. Um, and some unique things. You're going to see that the exam, the, the waiting area is a smaller waiting area. Uh, it's not as large as our existing ED. Two reasons for that. One is with the expanded emergency department, we don't expect to have a number of people holding in that waiting area. We want to get them back to the base to be treated. Uh, the second area is there's also a waiting area, a sub-waiting area in the back area. So we have what we call um, 
uh, people that have cold scrapes that we want to get them in and out. We have a number of bays designated just for that. Mm -hmm. In the waiting area, we have an adult waiting area, but we also have a peds waiting area. And so there's a special area designated just for the kids. Um, and so I think uh, people will appreciate that. Televisions to keep uh, people informed and entertained. Uh, and one little side note, uh, we hope, we hope your viewers never have to use our emergency department. But let me just give you a, a, little, a little side note here. If you do, I've just learned that there's a hidden Mickey. And so as you're going through, uh, look for the hidden Mickey. Uh, you know, Disney World, they have their hidden Mickeys. Oh, yeah, we yeah. found one here in the emergency department. Is that right? Oh, no, it's really, it's kind of cute. And, oh, yeah. and so uh, uh, keep your eye out for the hidden Mickey. Hidden Mickey, that's <laughs> the, you, you, you talked about behavioral um, uh, health and a yeah. total children's w waiting room for the kids, et cetera. So what would be different then? What, what, what would be different than what's happening right now? Okay, so, so right now we have the large waiting area. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have a designated Everybody. area for, for children. Right. Okay. Uh, the, other, the other thing is we don't have an area for the fast track. Um, and so we wanted the fast track was going to get patients moved through the process quicker. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, so, so that's ideal. Separate area for the kids. Make sure that we have uh, a waiting area designated for them. Smaller waiting areas, and so there, there's some major difference. As it relates to the behavioral health or the mental health beds, <clears throat> currently um, in our emergency department, the, the mental health patients are held in the, one of the bays. And so it's a challenge not only for Hazleton, but throughout Northeastern PA and throughout the United States, uh, site beds are very difficult to secure. And so what we've had happen in Hazleton and in just about every emergency department in the region um, is we have to hold those patients. We just can't discharge them. We have to hold them until we find a place for them to go if they need additional treatment. Okay. So what happens is we could be holding three or four. You have 18 exam rooms. Three or four are tied up for sometimes days wow. until we find a location to place them uh, wow. throughout throughout the area. So that means when a lot of volume, we have very high volumes in our emergency department, when we have some uh, site patients that we're waiting for placement, that takes our 18 bays down to 15 bays. So what we did is as we were going through the process, we said we need to have a secure behavioral health unit right in the emergency department. So it's not impacting the, the other patients. And so if we have to hold that patient, we have an area for them that's certainly more comfortable, it's a secured area, and we have enough bays that it's not slowing us down to take care of our other emergency Again, department. Again, related areas. to better health care. Better health care, absolutely. Right. Now, my question is this. Um, in our business, when we want to expand or we want to do something, we look to uh, the big cities, the high tech, et cetera. How do, you, how do you know the blueprint of what to do and how the layout this emerging this department like was it a, was it something national that you follow or is well, it something because it seems like you got all the bases covered here yeah we, we do uh the rooms the 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 exam rooms are much larger than we have in the in the existing space here's the benefit of being part of a larger network uh the lehigh valley health network has been in the ed business forever and they have remodeled and built emergency departments at muhlenberg and cedar crest and we have Pocono and we have school kill and so they're bringing a knowledge base uh, that's far greater than than we had previously with that level of, of experience to help us in both the design the layout the the uh, the uh, throughput process and so uh, we're very lucky uh, to have that level of expertise uh, come to Hazleton and as I mentioned to Tony the, the cooperation that you know you have with both with, with Lehigh Valley Hospital and uh, Allentown uh, I ask him uh, what will there be anything additional in terms of treating uh, a particular problem that you do not have now with the, when this is all completed? Well, from from an emergency room yeah, standpoint, yeah. I don't know that there's anything additional that we will be, that we will be providing. We're adding a CT scanner right in the emergency department, okay. so that's that's new. But we still offer the service. It's just yeah. it's just outside the system. So um, we offer a comprehensive emergency department services today. Yeah. I don't expect those services to expand. 
what our goal is to continue to, to provide that high quality service, but what we want to do is make sure that we have a quicker turnaround time and reduce those wait times. That was the intent here. All right, question for you. Go ahead. If someone suffers a stroke or a heart right. attack, okay, how, how do you know, uh, not necessarily, how do they know here that when that stroke victim, because you're great with, the, you've had awards on stroke, right? how do you know when you either treat them here or send them to Allentown or heart, you know, yeah. how do you determine that? So we have very qualified emergency room physicians. And, so, and so what you'll hear is if you were in the hospital and we have a potential stroke patient coming in, you're gonna hear over the intercom system, stroke alert, emergency department. Arrival time, if they're coming from the ambulance, arrival time, whatever. It kicks off an automatic process that occurs in this ED. We're connecting with the neuroradiologist at the network. We're connecting, we're connecting with the neurologist at the network. We evaluate the patients with our local ED physicians. They're connecting with our physicians at the network, and we're making a determination as to whether we need to fly that patient out immediately or whether we can handle it locally. Helicopter, if, there, if it's a determined that we're going to have to fly that patient out, uh, the, the emergency department will get in contact with the, the uh, pilots, and so as Sometimes, as we're bringing them in in the ambulance, the helicopter's on its way, yeah. ready to go. Yeah. They hit here, they get evaluated. If it's required, they're in that helicopter, and they're down at Lehigh Valley within 15, 20 minutes. I mean, it's not, yeah. it's not as you, I'm not exactly sure no, of the no, flight yeah, time, but yeah, it's, yeah. but we get them. I mean, yeah. and, and the other thing I'll say is, we talked about this before, under the, if you're having a heart attack, yeah. um, we're actually, at times, calling the heart attack out in the field. Uh, the, the EMS crews are saying, hmm, we have a heart attack coming. Mm -hmm. They hit here, we do the evaluation. We're flying them out if they need it. They don't go to the emergency department in Allentown, they go right to the cath lab. Wow. They, they do not, it's right to the cath lab yeah. uh, and, and we take care of those patients. Uh, before I go to break, um, um, before I go to break, your Lehigh Valley Hospital Hazleton as well as the Lehigh Valley uh, Hospital Network has right. received many, many national awards okay right. and I, I don't know if I talked to Tony on this one show or, or you John but these awards just don't happen you don't you know you don't buy these awards I mean you got to earn them you you absolutely have to earn them yeah. it, it, and it's not something I mean when we get these uh, awards and we're very very proud because it's not just one department yeah it's just not one group it's not just the physicians it's it's a comprehensive group of people that are working together to improve the quality of care it's not done where we give ourselves the award. We have these outside agencies who take a look, independently of us, at our data and score us. And that's how we get these awards. Yeah. So this is a very independent review and, yeah. and we're so proud of, of what we've been able to accomplish. For a small community hospital oh, yes. to have the quality of care that we have in Hazleton, yep. uh, so, I'm extremely proud. I'm proud of our medical staff. Yeah. I'm proud of all the colleagues that we have here in Hazleton. It's, it's, it's really incredible. Yeah. And, and um, I can't tell you the number of times that, that uh, we just got an email yesterday from a community member who thanked us for saving his life, had a heart attack, and said I was, it was incredible, the experience from the ED yeah. to Cedar Crest, yeah. you saved my life. Yeah. And uh, that makes you feel good. Yes. Now, not yeah. me, yeah. but, but yeah. makes me feel good, but I didn't save the life. But, but the process is in place that we are, we are offering high quality, saving people's lives, doing the right thing for, uh, for Hazel. Keep up the good work, John. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you thank talking you. to John Fletcher, folks, president. I, I've said this for years, folks, since 1994. Uh, you know, uh, I know uh, it's not as much as it was. People don't have to go out of town, but we are very fortunate to have the health care that we have in this greater area, uh, Hazelton area. Uh, doctors, second and none, nurses, uh, and I was complimenting Tony on your emergency department. I've come here, unfortunately, and my father-in-law and other people, and people are just wonderful. I mean, you know, under the stress, they're fantastic. We'll be back right after this. Thanks for being with us, folks. I'm here with Dr. Uh, Valent and John Fletcher, who is the president and CEO of the Lehigh Valley Hospital Hazleton. Uh, major phase, two phases. We're in phase one. Uh, a lot of great things happening. If you didn't see the show and you're just going through the channels, go to our website. Uh, you know the show is seen many times, but go to our website, ssptv.com, or go to the Lehigh Valley uh, Hospital Hazleton, and uh, it'll be on the, um, uh, the website. I want to thank the both of you. 
for doing such a great job and keeping us healthy in our area. Uh, believe me, it just doesn't happen overnight. These guys are fantastic. Compliments to all the people that work here at Lehigh Valley Hospital. I'm going to tell you, the nurses, the staff, the uh, LPNs, everyone who is here, they're so nice, living under conditions sometimes that are very stressful, but they uh, are managed to at least keep it civil, and that's so important. We'll see you next time.